welcome to class number two in the series of No Stress, No Pressure, No Free Motion Quilting. So we're at the sewing machine, so just a few little tips on how I like to sit at my sewing machine. The first thing I do with a lot of people know about is I use two of these rubber door wedges. I've got these from the hardware store. I like to put these under the back of my sewing machine because what that does, it tilts the machine forward so I've got no pressure on my shoulders. And I love it for all of my sewing because I want to see what the needle's doing. And now because we've traced the design onto our fabric, which we did in lesson one, we want to be able to see that line. So by tilting your machine forward really helps you achieve that. Some people say, oh, will it affect my machine? Well, I've been doing this for years and it's never, ever, ever affected my machine. And my mechanic says it's fine. So it's, you know, it's your choice. But I do um, really guarantee it will take a lot of pressure off your shoulders and neck. So now what we're going to do is talk about setting up our sewing machine. The foot we're going to use, I really strongly recommend that you use an open toe sewing foot. This is a regular sewing foot. This is a foot you'd probably use for doing blanket stitch, um, applique or anything that you needed to be able to see the edge of the fabric has nothing in the front. Now that allows me to see the line that I've drawn that I want to quilt on. So I pop that on. Now we also have the sew slip mat on the bed of the machine. Oops, just get that on. We've put the sew slip mat, so you just lay that over the bed of the machine. Make sure your feed dogs are up and that that mat's allowing your feed dogs to be exposed. Draw the bobbin thread up from underneath the mat because you don't want this bobbin thread stuck under the mat, otherwise it'll just break. Once you've got that bobbin thread up, just pat this mat down. Just pat it down so that it doesn't move. Now, if it is moving, that's the time you need to go and give it a bath in, in nice um, lukewarm water to get all the fluff off the back that you've, if you've been using it for a while, it will build up fluff on the back because we create fluff and lint as we sew. So now the next thing we need to do is set our stitch length a little bit longer than what we would normally use. Um, my machine, I usually use a 2.5 for regular sewing, which on my Benina, it is a little bit smaller stitch. So when I'm quilting through my three layers, I definitely need to increase my stitch length. So I'm going to put my stitch length up to about 2.85. Um, some people like to go to three. You'll have to work out what is best for your machine. Now, if you haven't used the fusible wadding that I've used, you would possibly have to be using a walking foot. Now, a lot of walking feet um, don't have the open toe um, area in them, which will make it harder for you to stitch on the line. Some of the later model machines have a, a walking foot with the open toe foot attachment. So you just need to know which is best for your machine. Now, the next most important thing that we're going to need to do, and you can do this on most nearly all machines, is adjust the pressure off this sewing foot off this foot here. Because when we normally sew and we put the pressure foot down, the pressure foot sandwiches the layers of fabric against the feed dogs. So you've got pressure on the fabric to make it move through. Now, when we quilt using my technique, I don't want as much pressure on the fabric. So I'm going to release the pressure off the foot. Now, because I don't know what sort of machines that everybody's using, you would have to either look at your machine manual, contact your dealer, or Google up the brand and the model of your sewing machine if you do not know how to do this. Some machines have a dial at the top that you can adjust the pressure on the foot. Now they put that device on most of our machines to release the pressure when we're sewing through bulk. So let's say if you're um, going to take up jeans and we all know when we get to that inside leg of a jean it's very um, it's very bulky and it's hard to sew across that so you can release the pressure to sew through that bulk so 
Remember, some machines have it up the top as a little button. Some machines have a dial on the side. My older Benina had a little wheel at the side and I could adjust the pressure off the foot by dialing that down. Some machines you can open the side door and there's a device in there to slide it up or down to release the pressure off the foot. Just find out where it is on your machine. On my machine, and we'll come around to this screen here, because this I, I upgraded to this um, Benina uh, 570 Quilters Edition because I wanted this device to be easy to find. I wanted it to be make it easy for me to quilt, and it certainly has done that. But to release the pressure on the foot here, I'm going to touch the third icon down. Now that is the icon that is going to allow me to adjust the pressure off this foot. So normal sewing, we're usually at 100% or thereabouts on, on my machine. Some machines highest pressure would be four. Some might be five, some might be six. You'll just have to work out what it is on your machine. So I've worked out with mine, the pressure that I need on this foot is 11%. So I'm just going to slide this dial down till I come to 11, okay? So I have 11 appearing on my screen here. I've dialed it right down. Now, if we took the pressure off completely off this foot, you'll find that your fabric will jump around too much and your top and bobbin thread will not connect and give you a beautiful stitch. So I find we need a little bit of pressure. So if your machine four is the highest, you probably want to come down to one. Don't go to zero. That won't work for you. It'll just make a mess. So now I've, I've got the pressure that I need. I'm going to press this button and it locks it in. So now I'm right to start sewing. So when I put this foot down, put my fabric under here, put this foot down, it's not going to sandwich it tight between the feed dogs, which now means that when I'm going around curves and that, I don't have to keep stopping and lifting the pressure foot to go around a curve. Because if I had to full pressure on, and I needed to stitch around a curve with full pressure, I'd be lifting the pressure foot all the time and pivoting, lifting the pressure foot, pivoting. You know, I have a knee lift on this machine, but I don't want to be using that all the time. I prefer not to have to stop and lift the pressure foot off. So by releasing the pressure off the foot, I'm not going to have to do that. So now let's look at some of the designs I've got drawn up and we'll explain to you a little bit about how we're going to sew these designs. Now, I've marked up these few here. This is with the hibiscus flower. Now, I've designed these Quilt As You Go quilting templates especially to allow us to quilt beautiful designs, but the purpose of designing them was to be able to give us a wave to quilt because I found a lot of other templates and stencils didn't give me a nice direct line without stopping a lot. So with this hibiscus here, you can see I've just lined up the hibiscus and it's filled up the whole area. Now, when I start quilting this, I'm going to find the most direct line to sew. I'm not going to sew this as a complete pattern, as in that flower, and then go on to the next flower. I would start at the top here and I'm going to sew down through here and then I'll come around this curve come around the curve, come around the curve, and I just keep finding a direct line to sew without having to stop too often. And then once I've stitched all of those lines, I've got a beautiful quilting pattern. So it's a very simple technique. It's nothing to do with quilting. The only thing that refers to quilting here is I'm stitching through three layers. So if you can sew a line of stitching on your sewing machine, you can be a beautiful quilter using this technique. And it won't take long to convince you. You just need to make one, one block and quilt it up and you'll realise that you can be a beautiful quilter. Here we've got um, our circles using um, one of our templates. This one, this design comes from set B. So once again, I will find a direct line to sew so that I'm not having to stop too often. And once I start sewing, you'll see that I'll be able to just guide this fabric under the needle. When I get down to here, I won't have to stop and lift the pressure foot. 
because I've got the pressure off the foot, I'll be able to sew around these curves without stopping. I would never suggest that you try and stitch this as a circle. Stitching a circle is too hard. So find the wave, stitch the wave, and it'll make it so easy for you to, to achieve beautiful designs. Once again, this one here is from set B and I've connected everything together. I find the wave, I quilt the wave till I get the whole pattern stitched out. Very simple, very easy. This one here is using um, the clamshells from set D and just drawing up a little design here, but I could fill in more. But I may quilt this first and then go back and decide what I want to fill in here. I might want to fill in some of the curves from set um, B or use something from set A. Interact your templates together. So all I'm going to do is stitch a straight line, come across, go back up, find a line and keep stitching. Now, a lot of purists and, you know, a lot of people out there love um, to not stitch back over a previous stitching line. And a lot of purists say you should never quilt over a, a previous quilting line. Well, I, I don't worry about that. Um, I like to stitch over a previous stitching line because it builds up a layer of threads which can enhance the design for you. So if you come down here and back around and you come up here and stitch back over that line, I don't see there's a problem with that. And we'll have a look at that example in a moment. So just keep drawing up some designs on some fabric squares like this or some rectangles and then practice stitching on the line because what you're going to do once you've got your first design stitched out, I guarantee your confidence will soar and you will be able to quilt all of these beautiful designs. All you need is a good marking pencil, good set of templates, set your machine up with a sew slip mat, put your open toe foot on, release the pressure, don't stress over it, don't have any pressure on yourself, don't have much pressure on the foot and quilt to your heart's content. Like this is um, from set A, this is the leaf pattern and you can do amazing things with this little leaf. So now if I was going to stitch this design up, which I think this will be the first design I start stitching for you, I'll find a starting point, I'll come down and swing in and out, find the direct line to sew and then come back into the next line and just keep going until you fill up the whole design and all of a sudden you've got this beautiful pattern. But let's have a look at some of the examples behind me here so I can show you some of the ones that we've stitched out and I think you'll agree they're all beautiful patterns and I think anybody would be really, really happy if they could stitch out these sort of designs. But when I talk about going back over the threads, you can see here where I've stitched here, you can see a build up of thread here where I've stitched over and over, but it's what makes the design work so much. It really makes it pop. And you can see with a lot of them, here I haven't really stitched over much, but as I said, don't try and quilt a circle, I found that wave to quilt, then come back and then as we come over here we're going to then completely encase that circle. So we have a circle but we haven't actually stitched a circle. So you can see by these examples, this one here, find the wave and keep, just keep stitching till you get that whole design stitched up for yourself. So you're ready to sew. Let's get sewing because it's, um, I want to show you how to manoeuvre the fabric under the needle. So if we're going to put this one on and start here. Now when I start, um, I like to draw my bobbin thread to the top. So I put my pressure foot down, pressure foot down, put my needle down, right? Hold your top thread, push needle up button and pull on your top thread. Now that will cause your bobbin thread to come up and create a loop. Now if you don't have a needle up, needle down position on your sewing machine, you would need to hand wind your needle down 
with the flywheel. And as you start to bring the needle back up, pull on that top thread and it will pull your bobbin thread to the top. I don't like to leave the bobbin thread underneath because it, it jumbles up. It makes a, an awful mess at the back. So now start with your needle down. Do a couple of little stitches. You know, there's many ways we can start and stop our sewing. Um, I just find that I like to do a couple of little stitches. I just hold my fabric firmly, let my machine do a couple of stitches in the one spot, then do a couple of stitches, hold and do another couple of stitches in the one spot. That will anchor your threads off and you'll be able to cut these threads. If you don't like starting and stopping like that, I would just draw my um, bobbin thread to the top. I'd use a needle. I'd thread these two threads on a needle and bury them back in between the layers of the wadding and the fabric. Now, the other thing I do, which I, I talk about a lot in all my other videos, I always have my, pre my pedal of my sewing machine. I call it the accelerator. I always have it positioned straight under the needle and I do all my sewing with my left foot. Now, a lot of people say, oh, no, I could never do that. I guarantee it'll take you five minutes to learn how to sew with your left foot and your body will love it. Because I believe when we put our foot out to the right, which we do because the cord of the sewing machine comes out on the right side of our machine, and because we drive our car with our right foot, we usually sew with our right foot. But I found sewing with my right foot, my foot pedal keeps moving away from me and I actually end up with a lot of um, aches and that in my neck and my shoulders because I found that sewing with my right foot I was actually twisting my spine. So having your foot pedal you, you accelerate it directly under your needle, put your left foot on it because that's the side of the machine that we, we are situated at, you are now sewing with a perfectly straight spine and your left foot will allow you to control the speed of the needle much better than your right foot. So I have my machine on the highest speed Okay, I don't use the cruise control button, I have it on the highest speed and I control the speed of my needle with my left foot on the foot pedal. So okay, let's get started. Now I'm not going to sit over the machine like such and have my hands like this, like most people quilt. I'm going to hold my fabric from the front. So I, I always say, explain this, like drive from the front because we want to manoeuvre this fabric freely. We don't want to restrict the flow. So just hold it from the front, keep your eye on the needle and you should be able to see that because you've got the open toe foot on and if you notice I'm only driving with my left hand at this stage because it's I haven't got all that pressure down on the foot so my fabric's just going to glide. The sew slip mat is the most important part of this. So just glide it around. When we get up to here, needle down, and now you can see how I'm able to pivot that round. I didn't have to lift the pressure foot. And there we go. So it is so easy. So we're quilting a beautiful design just by sewing on a line. Now I think every single person can quilt like this. There is no issues whatsoever. And you can see now why I call it no stress, no pressure, no free motion quilting. Now, if you happen to run off the line a bit, it doesn't matter because with using that Bohin marking pencil, you can use your eraser that's on the end of the pencil and erase that line off. You can also, um, when you wash um, your project for the first time, that marking pencil will wash out. So that's how I teach people to quilt these days. And I hope you can um, continue on the journey with me and make it easy for yourself to quilt. In the next lesson in this series, lesson three, I'm going to bring Joey in who has done very, very little quilting and I'm going to sit her at the sewing machine and teach her how to be able to quilt one of these beautiful patterns. So stay tuned and join me for the third lesson in this series so we can teach you and Joey how easy quilting can be. So bye for now.